Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a new build. It's a 2012 Lexus IS250 all-wheel drive. Now, I thought I had had a unicorn with my last one, being that it was all-wheel drive, rust-free, and in Texas, and it had an unbroken windshield, but apparently I have found the unicorn pasture because this one checks all those boxes as well. Although this one is not a clear title, this one's salvaged, so it will be rebuilt when it's all done. Now, since so many people wanted the last one, maybe you got a shot, if you missed it, at getting this one. Could be my last one since Scott's Lexus Emporium is out of IS250 parts. So, let's get it down to the shop and take a look at it and see what it's going to take to get this thing fixed. It needs a whole lot less than our last one did. So, let's get to it. So our front door opens. That's nice. Makes our job a little easier removing the door. There's a little cover over the door check we have to pop off because, well, it's a fancy Lexus and you can't just see the bolts in there. We'll just pop that off, spin out our door check. Then we can disconnect our wiring harness. We'll just use a pick to pop our little grommet out of our A-pillar here and stab ourselves in the finger. And then we're going to try and fish this wiring harness out of here. The plugs are just slightly larger than the hole they're trying to go through. They're not, but it seems like they are. So it takes a little while to fish it out of there. It has to come out perfectly straight. So today there's minimal editing in this video. So if you're wondering how long it takes me to do a job like this, well, look at the length of the video because that's pretty much it. I did edit out some walking around and stuff, but I also did have an introduction and an outro. So if you take those off, this is pretty much the amount of time I spent to do as much work as I did in this video. Pretty simple. We won't be plugging this back in until we have to. We almost got it out where I can get to it. Now I can disconnect it. And wouldn't you know there's another plug in there. So we need to move it around so we can get to the other one. Our lights are out. So now we're going to stuff our plug back in the cowl and probably lose it, never see it again. Stuff this wiring harness back in the door, that way it won't get in our way. Now we can start unbolting our door. We're just going to leave the hinges on the cowl. Hopefully they're not bent and we can just bolt our new door up. If we do have to change them, that's a little bit more work. So. I'll try this first. There's not a lot of damage on the door, so I'm kind of optimistic those hinges might be okay. Start at the bottom, work your way up, and you don't have to worry about holding the door. You do the top bolt last, and kind of just let everything set on that top bolt. Then you got to hold on to it. Our last bolt. So now we gotta hold on to the door while we take this last bolt out so it doesn't end up crushing our toes. And our front door's off. Let me get to the back door. We're gonna unplug the wiring harness first or stab ourselves in the finger. Up the grommet out of the B pillar like the front, except a lot less room here because the door smashed. But there's at least only one plug in this door. So now we finally got that unplugged. We'll leave it there so it can get jammed in the door. And we'll open our door. It unlatches, but it doesn't open all the way. Probably because we're smashing that plug we just left in the way. So we'll stuff it out of the way. 
And it can open a little further. And with a little force, we can open it a lot further. We just need to get it open enough so we can get to that door check. Squeeze ourselves in here. Pop the little cap off of our door check. And now we can unbolt our door check. Not a lot of room in that door. And our wiring harness is getting stuck in there again. Big surprise. So we're just going to stuff it back in the door and then close the door up. We'll latch the door. We can unbolt the hinge from the pillar on the bottom. That hinge is destroyed. We're definitely going to have to change it. The top one, we're going to take it off the door. We'll leave the hinge on the pillar. Open up our door and carry that to the pile. So we have a little damage inside. Our B-pillar is folded up a little bit from where our hinge went back into it. Uh, and then where the door went into it at the bottom. And our dog legs pushed in pretty good. There is no structure in there. Uh, it's further in, so hopefully it didn't get in that far. And if we get lucky, it's just going to be changing that outer panel of the unicide. And maybe a little pull on the B-pillar, but we won't know until we fit our doors and take some measurements. But before we take any measurements or fit anything, we need to continue taking the rest of this apart. We're going to pull our sill plates off. The wiggle and pull. I am not doing very good at bozo buckets today. Pull the sill plate off the back door. Now we can pull our seat bottom off in the back, just lift up on the front, disengage the clips. And peel it off the floor. Somebody spilled some sticky stuff. Push the seat belts through. Peel our money off the floor. It's going to be a profitable build now. Candy. Now we'll go put the seat in the pile so that it's not getting messed up. Now we're going to pull the front seat out. We'll, we'll pull the little trim pieces off the bottom of the seat track so that we can see the bolts. Unbolt the front ones and if we get the right size. Then we can put our seat forward. And we'll pop our covers off the back. See what kind of treasures await us under here. Lighter. And now we can get to our bolts. Now we can lean our seat back so we can get to the wiring harness underneath. There's like four plugs which aren't too bad to disconnect. However, geniuses at Toyota decided to attach the wiring harness to the bottom of the seat. And those clips are a little more difficult to unplug. So, I guess a little while under here. Pick is your friend. But we finally got the harness disconnected. We'll pull the headrest off so that it's giving us a little more room in there. 
And then we'll grab the seat and take it out of here. Go put that in the pile. Now we can take our B pillar trim off, take the seat belt off that's in our way. There's a little cap on the bottom. We can unbolt it. Can't take it all the way out of there. There's a plug that's behind the B pillar trim. So we'll pop this trim off of here. And now we can see our wiring harness. Unplug that. And we'll fish that wire underneath the carpet. And the bottom half of our seat belt is out. Now we can unbolt the retractor and unplug it. We're taking the seatbelt out just so that we can get in there if we need to. And even if we don't need to, it's better to have it out of the way than get messed up. It doesn't take much for a spark from welding to land in that seatbelt and burn through it. So it's easier to take it out of the way, spend a couple minutes and not have to buy a seatbelt later on. So that's what I'm going to do. You learn from your mistakes. Then we got one more plug. Unbolt the top of the retractor. And now we can move to the upper trim. A couple screws in the bottom of it. And the wiggle and pull. Slide it out of the roof. And fish our seat belt out of it. And we can unbolt the top of our seat belt. We'll put the fastener back up there so we don't lose it. Now we can pull our C pillar trim out, the lower portion. We'll disconnect it from the upper piece. We'll just leave the upper piece in there. Shouldn't be in our way. And now we can pull off our rocker molding, side skirt, whatever you want to call it. We need to get in there. There's welds behind it. Plus we need to clamp this thing up. We're definitely going to need a little pull on that dog leg and we might need to move the B pillar. There's a couple screws in each wheel well. And a couple of Phillips screws hidden behind the little rubber strip. A lot easier to get these off when the doors are gone. Well, it should be anyway. This guy seems to be struggling. Wiggle and pull, pops right out. Frost. These are the nice clips. They go in, they stay in, and then you just wiggle them and they come right out. No extraordinary life saving measures for these clips. Well, you've been here before. Now we'll take the push pins out of the bottom. This is the closest I'm going to get to a nap today, so hopefully the supervisor isn't watching and Mr. Spotty's not around to tattle on me. So because this car is in Texas, chances are when it got hit it was pretty warm. So this piece, even though it's plastic, is still good. It definitely got hit. We'll be able to buff those marks off of there and be able to reuse it. If that was from up here and it was cold, it would have cracked or shattered or something. It would definitely not be usable, but we'll be able to clean it up and throw it back on. Worst case, we have to paint it. And since these things are pretty expensive and a lot of times hard to find in a junkyard, I'm going to try to save it. I want to say a new one was $600.
We finally got our last clip out of there. I'm going to put it back together so we don't lose the two parts. So it's ready to go back in. And a little wiggle and pull. And our rocker molding's off. And we got a used door. It's not the right color. Maybe a blendable match. I actually tried to get the right color just so I didn't have to pull the door apart, but it didn't work out. The price was right on this door, so I didn't care what color it was. We're gonna pull our hinges off and hope that our original hinges are good because it's a lot easier to bolt the door onto the hinges that are already bolted onto the A-pillar than it is to bolt the hinges onto the A-pillar once they're already bolted onto the door. So with any luck, our hinges are gonna be okay. If not, I'm probably going to put the hinges on the B-pillar and then put them on. If the fender was off, it'd be a lot easier to just throw it up there, but I'm not taking the fender off just to put the door on. So. We'll try this and take more than a few minutes to throw this door up here. Well, we're about to find out how long it's going to take. Silver alert. We got an old man wandering aimlessly around the shop. Now he's back on track. Make sure our bolts are within reach. Nothing worse than getting it up there and realizing you can't reach the bolts from where you are. Set the door on our door stand. Move it into place. We're gonna try and get the bolt in the top so that we can relax. Actually, at this point, I'll settle for any bolt in any position. This is the part where the tool experts go down in the comments and tell me that they make a door stand for this. And I know, I have one. It sits in the corner and collects dust because, well, it's a lot easier just to use your knee. So that's what I'm doing. I can throw this door on six times before I can set up the door stand. So while the tool experts are setting up their precious door stands, I have moved on to the next part of the car. All right, we finally got our bolt in there a few threads, so we can relax a little bit. Get the rest of them started. Have to move the door around a little bit. Line them up. And now we can start to tighten them all up. We'll use our foot as a door check. I'm not going to put the door check in yet. I might be taking this door off a couple times. I did drop it down inside the door. We're one bolt short went but we found another one so we'll put that back in the hinge all the bolts are in we'll snug them down they are self-aligning so we can take the door off and it'll go right back where it belongs. See how it fits? Doesn't fit too bad. Put our car up in the air. It stands underneath it. We're ready to clamp it up if we have to. We're definitely going to have to do a little pulling on that dog leg, just not sure how much. And since our door closes all right, we might be okay with not having to pull our B-pillar. We'll 
pull the rocker molding off of the other side. A little more work this time because we've got a couple doors in our way. We're taking this side off just so we can put our clamps on the pinch weld. With the rocker molding in the way, you can't get to it. Pull the screw out of the front. Somebody's had these rocker moldings off the floor. Pull our clips off the bottom. Open up our doors and a little wiggle and pull and our rocker molding should be off. We got some free Texas tree parts with our purchase. And I'm tired of having to hold the fob up against the start button. So we're gonna change the battery in it. And then we'll have keyless entry once again. Not sure why every one of these I buy has a dead battery in the fob, but they all do. So we'll pop the case open, pop our battery out, Pretty simple. The hard part is getting the new battery out of the package. Bought a different brand this time to see if I could actually get into this package. Not looking any better. I'm either getting this battery out or I'm going to stab myself in the finger. Maybe both. I win. I guess we're getting the battery out. So we'll pop it in our fob. I'll put the circuit board back in there. And clip our case back together. and make sure our buttons work. Well, since it lights up, we're a little bit ahead of where we were before. All right. Key back in there. In the pile. So that's as far as we're gonna go on our Lexus for today. We got everything apart. We got our used door up there. and Actually, it fits pretty decent. I'm hoping that the rear door will be just bolted on and it fits pretty decent. Then we could just change this outer piece and we don't have to worry about pulling too much. We're still gonna have to pull the the dog leg out here a little bit, that's why it's up on the frame rack. We didn't have it clamped up yet, but I might have to, to, to pull that out. So we'll all do all that next time because I gotta go pick up the door from Scott's Lexus Emporium. Uh, he didn't deliver. This one came from uh, another yard. Scott's Lexus Emporium was fresh out of front doors. So uh, I'm gonna go do that and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. I don't ever smoke up, no I don't take I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit.